Today, I will talk about how Samsung Display became a global leader in a small and medium-sized OLED displays for mobile phones and how LG Display was able to occupy an overwhelming position in the OLED field for TVs. This story is based on a previously unknown backstory. Now, let's start the tech trip. The discovery that organic materials can emit light by applying electricity goes back to the 1960s, but it was Dr. C. W. Tang of Kodak in the 1980s who discovered the real possibility. The problem was that Kodak's internal response was not very favorable, so the results were published in a 1987 paper in an atmosphere that almost gave up the research. However, the published paper received an explosive response, and a number of companies in Japan, Europe, and United States started researching on OLED. For example, Pioneer, Panasonic, Sony, Hitachi, Sharp, Matsushita, Sanyo, Motorola, HP, Xerox, IBM, Texas Instrument, Philips, Osram, and AT&T started participating and started researching on OLED. In the early 2000s, Japanese Pioneer and Sanyo started selling small OLED displays mounted on their audio devices and camera displays respectively. And sometime later, in 2004, Sony developed and started selling 11-inch OLED TVs. It was an event that drew the attention of the global display industry and praise continues for the excellent and beautiful picture quality they realized perfect black. However, since the 11-inch size was sold for $2,500, the market reaction was cold, and Sony did not even consider a business with a large investment. And in 2011, Sony started producing small-volume 25-inch OLED TVs with excellent picture quality for professionals. The technology used at the time was different from LG Display's white OLED, and the high-difficulty technology called top emission, which was later used in Samsung Display's OLED for cell phones, was applied. So there was a stumbling block in the production of large-size display. Sony's OLED technology was a high-quality technological advancement achieved very quickly in a short period of time, but the problem was the price, and there was no will to invest in mass production to lower the price. I think it's because of the nature of a conservative Japanese company that hits hard on stone bridges and does not cross them. On the other hand, Samsung Display, which witnessed the possibility, concentrated all its efforts on research and development to complete the OLED display for mobile phones, and in 2008, began selling it to Nokia, which was a strong player in the mobile phone field at the time, launched the world's first mobile phone, N85. However, the response of Samsung Electronics, which should be Samsung Display's primary customer, was gloomy. Samsung Electronics applied OLED for the first time only in 2009, and this fact alone shows how passive Samsung Electronics was toward OLED. The main reason is that OLED at the time had a lower resolution than LCD, and the price was higher than LCD and the brightness could not be driven as brightly as it is these days. If so, what was the situation of LG display at the time? In a word, it was not very positive about OLED. In April 2008, LG display signed a contract to supply LCD for iPod with Apple, and in January 2009, 
They signed another long-term supply contract for LCD panel for iPhone. In 2010, the supply of iPad started. So in the LCD boom phase, LG Display could not afford to pay attention to OLED. Therefore, at that time, the situation of OLED was not so favorable, not only in Japan, but also in Korea. In a word, the OLED industry was on the verge of whether it would bloom or sit down. But the reversal comes. At the time, Vice Chairman Lee Jae-yong was in the position of managing director and was involved in the display-related business as a registered director of LCD, an LCD joint venture with Sony, and was also in a position to show performance as a successor. And he was well aware that the LCD industry was going to run into oversupply sooner or later. Lee Jae Yong, executive vice president, will exert influence in actively applying OLED panels for Samsung Electronics top tier mobile phone models. The situation turns around in an instant. Samsung Electronics, which had been silent, started to move overnight as if it had ever been and the entire group formed the TFD to secure global leadership of OLED for mobile and moved quickly. In a marketing, Sondambi is mobilized to get the term AMOLED, which was not familiar to the general public, engraved in the mind. Then music is after school and Sondambi is AMOLED. At the time, people didn't know if this lyric was singing a technology called OLED and they were on the list of hit. And the market reaction starts to heat up. I will introduce two articles from that time. One is an article related to HTC, which was written in June 2010, where Samsung Display supplied OLED panels. There is a problem with the panel supply from Samsung Displays. It coincides exactly with the launch of Samsung's top model, the Galaxy S, in June 2010. This is because of the aftermath Samsung Electronics' decision to adopt OLED in a short period of time. This is the result of a shortage of production. And this is the second article. The annual production capacity of 35 million OLED panels will be increased to 30 million units per month by 2011, that is, an almost tenfold increase in production. And Samsung's Galaxy S series, equipped with an improved OLED panel, is an unprecedented hit. If so, what was LG Display's situation at the time? LG Display taking a passive strategy of wait and see begins to panic. It is said that LG Electronics complains that they cannot sell cell phones because they do not have an OLED panel. LG Display was completely unprepared, so they had no ability to respond, and they had no choice but to watch. Since Samsung Display was the first mover, they were able to tie up Japan's major component supplier, not to supply their components to other than Samsung Display. As a result, the barriers to entry of competitors are so high that for a long time, and even not so long ago, Samsung had an almost monopoly position in the small and medium-sized OLED arena. The competition for small and medium-sized OLED ended in a state where companies other than Samsung have not been able to properly climb into the ring. Let's take a moment to summarize what happened around 2010. If we forget history, the same thing will inevitably be repeated over and over again. As you can see from the graph, around 2009, LG Display's LCD industry continued to grow rapidly. Moreover, since they even signed a long-term contract with Apple, they may not want to lose their concentration on the technology that still seems to have many programs such as OLED, and therefore technology itself would have been more negative. A full-fledged aftermath begins when LCD peaks in 2017 
and goes down here. How was Samsung's mobile phone business? From 2010 onward, Samsung Electronics will achieve unprecedented record-breaking performance. With the huge heat of Galaxy S, equipped with a 4-inch OLED, which was large at the time, it suddenly emerged as a leader in the global market. As you can see from the graph, the result was truly amazing. Of course, the application of OLED cannot explain all the results, but it is true that it has had a strong impact. Lastly, let's take a look at how LG Electronics cell phone business was at the time when there was no OLED panel supplier. As you can see from the graph, there seems to be no problem until 2009 when Samsung just started adopting OLED. In other words, it was a situation in which there was no reason to be active in adopting OLED panels, just like Samsung Electronics mobile phone business in 2008. But look how quickly things change. In a word, it was a horrendous crash, and LG Electronics hit LG Display with SOS. But LG Display didn't help, because they were not ready at all. And the new match begins, large OLED TV development. Some executives were reprimanded for ignoring the potential of OLED for mobile phones, and Kubo Mo, chairman of LG Group, who only seemed gentle and humble, placed an unprecedentedly strong order. It was to make OLED TV a success, no matter what. It is said that he even told them to pack up everything and go home if they failed. Fortunately for LG, there was a trump card. It is the fact that the white OLED-related patent mentioned in the previous video was purchased from Kodak by paying about $100 million. In 2008, Kodak filed a big lawsuit against Samsung and LG for infringing their patents on the compression, storage, and preview functions of cell phone camera images. In the process of resolving it, LG purchased Kodak's OLED patent as a package deal. Compared to the RGB method Samsung uses for the OLED production for mobile phones, the white OLED is significantly simpler, in-line processing is possible, and major patents have been secured. So LG Display was able to occupy a very advantageous position. In fact, the will to make OLED TVs and the sense of challenge have been weak in the past. It is expected that not many of you will remember, but in 2013, Samsung first released a Full HD Class 55-inch OLED TV for $9,000. Yes, Samsung has also released OLED TVs. It was released under the model name KN55 S9C, and it was released in the form of a curve rather than a plane. And in 2014, LG released 65-inch and 77-inch in 4K resolution. The price of a 65-inch TV was $11,000, which was a bit higher than that of Samsung, but it was 65-inch large and had 4K resolution so it was rather cost-effective. What was the result? The game ended in a one-sided victory for LG that needed no explanation. LG Display's white OLED method is overwhelmingly superior to Samsung's RGB method in almost every aspect, such as productivity, yield, lifespan, brightness, and price, except for power efficiency. The winner had already been decided before the game started. Samsung's OLED TVs disappeared without a trace. As a result, Samsung is occupying the small and medium-sized OLED panel using RGB method, and LG is occupying the OLED panel market for TV using white OLED method, maintaining their position as a global leader so far. 
This is a backstory that Korean companies were able to become the world's best in the OLED field. This is it for today. Goodbye.